Hello YouTube, this is an alcohol review of James E. Pepper 1776 Bourbon. According to the label, 50% alcohol by volume, 100 proof. Has a little thing here. Says, in this bottle lies the oldest and most legendary whiskey legacy in Kentucky history. The same old style and method have been preserved and restored in this fine whiskey. Well, we'll see about that. Claims to be the oldest, <coughs> excuse me, in Kentucky. I'm sure that it is uh, under contention. The back states, established in 1780 during the American Revolution, the Pepper family ran uh, is the oldest brand of whiskey named in Kentucky. The brand was fondly called Old 1776 by its scion, Colonial James E. Pepper. Uh, this fine whiskey was hand bottled at the historic Pepper Distillery, Lexington, Kentucky. I do like the old snake. But being separate. Doesn't help being whole helps. Whereupon you've got South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, New York, New England, New Jersey, Maine, Maine, odd. New England you think would be part of Maine, but not in their snakes case. My people, Pennsylvania. No, West Virginia. Hmm. Maybe a precursor. West Virgi Virginia was gigantic and eventually broke into two places. Virginia and West Virginia. Wood top, plastic cork. I will spare you the boring details of the significance of that. I do like the texture of the, uh, of the label. That's nice. I always like good labeling. Or at least effort on good labeling. I like the style of that bottle. For some reason it stands out to me. I'm not quite sure why it's very similar to other whiskey bottles, just for some reason it stands out. We have here a well it is a dark yellow. I would like to say caramel color, but there isn't any caramel color to it. It is just a dark yellow. Now I found this part interesting here on the label and that it states to be unfiltered boy she's clear for unfiltered I mean I wish I got my my meads and beers it's nice and pretty when they're unfiltered because that is beautiful and if you want to swirl people are coming home so please ignore the noise It is fairly slow to tear. Very little tearing at all, actually. Now, in case you're wondering why and why the, the, the stir and the worrying about the tearing factor is that you can see what you're going to taste early on, if you will. The higher the residual sugar levels, the thicker the uh, solution, the thicker the solution, the heavier the mouthfeel. The supposedly the sweeter you're going to get because of the greater the, the amount of sugar still left in the solution, but I have found that is really a here nor there sort of thing. But it does help show whether or not it's going to be heavy mouthfeel. And this right there shows it's going to be thick. Excuse me. Smells like lemon pledge. Copyrighted. A little bit of caramel. A little bit of vanilla. But, <coughs> excuse me, heavy, heavy amounts of lemon. Very little burn, 
but you can tell that there is some, which is surprising considering that it's 100 proof. I tend to shy away from things that are 100 proof because it's the alcohol becomes a distractor. And I'm not trying to get hammered by it. I'm trying to taste something that, I'm, that I want to taste. Some you know, good flavors. Not, like I said, not fall over. If I want to fall over, I'll buy the cheap stuff. <coughs> it wants to bite your nose, but there's not enough there, too. Like I said, very surprising for 100 proof. But heavy on the fruit notes, especially lemon. A dash of caramel. That or it could be the, the vanilla fooling me. I mean, nice all, all in all. <coughs> Is that 100 proof? <coughs> A lot more burn. Than you'd anticipate going through, and that's because of the hundred proof. It makes it difficult to sort that out and get all the flavor. Yeah, back the stuff and back the palate starting to come through. In the beginning, there was a lot of, like I said, the lemon and the caramel, as well as a bunch of other wonderful flavors. But that uh, ethanol. I don't know how it tastes to you guys, but to me it tastes like burnt tire. And that's all that I'm getting right now. Coming from the back of the pallet, washing for, forward. It was kind of strange. You got the, the the initial flavors. It died down. It was almost like there was a, a breath. And then, boom. Burnt tire. layered a little bit caramels the <coughs> the palate's uh, an exact opposite of what you're getting off, off on, on the nose so all those fruit notes have now died down and all the spices are now coming out it's got a long long hang time the mouthfeel is deceptive because it has a regular watery mouthfeel it's not any thicker than anything else but man it holds on to the tongue and does not want to let go and like I said you've got that backwash I don't want to say backwash it's, it's no negative you have this encounter <laughs> of nothing but this, this ethanol coming through and that's to me is a, a strong distractor for what I want to taste. I would love to try this. Not 100 proof. Just so it's not so dominating. I'm willing to bet it has a lot to offer. Knocked down to a normal level. By now, the burning, what little burning there was, shockingly, it's gone. There was no bite at all. Also, shockingly. And now it's kind of tamed itself. I guess if you had it on ice, that would uh, speed up the process. It's not bad otherwise. I would have to say it's it's worth the price of admission. But I know that it's not exactly a ringing uh, endorsement to say, well, it's what you, it's what you pay for. This would go well on a cocktail. Straight up, not so much. Not, not neat. But in a cocktail, especially ones that involve colas, a lot of extra sweetness to it. That would do very well with this. Fruity cocktails? Possible. Possible. Uh, just, just know that if you have any light flavored fruits involved, apple or grape or something, it may not want to play well, but something like um, a dark and stormy 
That would go well with this. Like, don't think you put bourbon. Think you put rum in a dark and stormy. Well, be be a rebel. Swap out the rum. Put this 1776 in on a dark and stormy. Call it a dark and stormy 1776. Whatever. Let your imagination go wild. And I think it would it would complement the soda as well. But straight up neat. It's, it would be nearing enjoyable if it wasn't for the high alcohol level that just knocks it down. Like I said, it's, it's, it's like having a nice conversation with somebody who's a bit of a soft talker and a guy beside you cheering on his favorite baseball, baseball team, just screaming it. That's really what this is. This is like it's so. It's not so much the bourbon's fault. There really is no fault at all. It's just that this is one of the reasons why you stay away from hundred proofs. That that extra oomph, that high octane, really knocks these knocks these bourbons down to a peg that you just. It's, it's worth a sip. It's worth a try. But as for a constant stay in your uh, rotation of, of bourbons and whiskeys, no, not, not really. I, I apologize to James E. Pepper. Like I said, I'm really anxious to try the 1776 not 100 proof. I'm just going to have to try to track that down. I'm willing to bet that's going to be quite tasty. But... You guys give give it a try. See what you think. I mean, I could be completely wrong and have been in the past. I'm not saying don't buy it. Definitely buy it. As a matter of fact, buy it, try it, and review it on uh, YouTube's Spirits Community like I have. I'd be anxious to hear what you guys have to say about it. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. I'm just saying it's, it's falling victim to... In my humble soul opinion, and I'm really a nobody out in the middle of nowhere, but in my humble opinion, the hundred, it's not the bourbon, it's the hundred proof part that makes it, you know, try and see what you think. I don't want to see anything bad because it's really nothing bad. It's just a trend in my taste buds. Any comments down below before I keep rambling on more and more about this? Any comments down below will be warmly accepted, as always. Or, as I said before, better yet, go out, buy it, try it, see what you think, see what your friends think. Like I said, I've been wrong in the past countless times. This could be the greatest stuff on earth, and I just, I'm just too much of a dimwit to know it. But, 1776, James E. Pepper. James E.? Yes, James E. Pepper. There you go. But... Until next time, keep on drinking.